Non-essential variables explained. Another attempt at a short video by Gary Pace, P-E-C-W-I, May 2019. Key terms and definitions. For this video, we got one definition we're going to really use. Non-essential variable. A parameter that when changed does not require requalification. Any condition change that does not affect the quality and integrity of the weld deposit and does not necessitate requalification. So we're talking about something that does not affect the metallurgical quality or the tensile strength or um, QG 105.4 non-essential variables. Non-essential variables are conditions in which a change as described in the specific variables is not considered to affect the mechanical properties of the joint. These variables shall be addressed in the procedure specification as required by QG 101. A procedure specification may be editorially revised to change a non-essential variable to fall outside of its previously listed range but does not require requalification of the procedure specification. So I'm going to get into this here shortly. I got three or four slides with examples of a non-essential variable and how they work. Importance of non-essential variables. If a change is made in a non-essential variable, the procedure need only be revised or amended to address the non-essential variable change. So here we see our um, table from, this is from ASME section nine, different codes have different ways of addressing it, but I'm more familiar with ASME section nine, so that's where I'm gonna deal with things. Um, so you've got essential, supplementary essential, and non-essential. The only place where non-essential variables need to show up are on the WPS, but they have to be addressed. A lot of people fall into the trap of thinking it's non-essential. It's a non-essential variable. I don't need to address it. It's not important. No, it is important, but when we say it's non-essential, it just means that if you change something on that non-essential variable, you don't have to go back to the starting block and requalify your procedure. You just need to list it that you changed something. So I've got some the following slides will talk about a few different um, non-essential variables and kind of how it works and the thought process behind it. So let's dive into this. Here's an example of groove design. So on the left hand side we've got the cross section of a single bevel groove weld. And then let's say we want a, our new um, groove design. We're using the same filler materials, the same base metals, everything else is the same. But we want to go, the welders come to us and say, hey boss, we need to go to a different groove design for reasons X, Y, and Z. I need to go to a double bevel groove weld, right? We want a single bevel on both sides of the weld joint. So what have we changed metallurgically, mechanically, chemically, spiritually, whatever? Nothing. The only thing we're changing is the direction we're depositing the weld metal. So from a mechanical, metallurgical, physical standpoint, we have done nothing to that weld. The only thing we've done has been to change the configuration. Well, all we need to do is write down in our weld procedure, come up with a new revision. So we were revision one, maybe. We revise the weld procedure. It becomes revision two. We add this new joint configuration to it. That's all. That's all a, um, a non-essential variable is telling us. You still have to address it. It has to be on your weld procedure. It doesn't need to be on your PQR, but it needs to be on your welding procedure specification. It needs to be there. And... Um, you need to address it, but that's it. We don't have to go back and qualify a new PQR procedure qualification record like if we switched um, P numbers, you know, the, the base materials that we're welding, or we switched a different welding process, or we switched to a different F number, a different type of filler metal. Here's another example. Um, 
of a groove design. If we change from the groove design on the left hand and we want to do it to the, um, the V groove configuration on the right hand side, we don't need a new PQR. We just have to write in the WPS that the new configuration is allowed or have some kind of verbiage that says this is an allowable um, joint configuration. Here we've gone to backing. Do we need backing or don't we need backing? The code doesn't care. We just need to address is backing able to be used in this weld procedure or not. These are instructions that are given to the welder. A WPS is instructions to the welder. So we need to let the welder know is backing acceptable or not. But if we add backing or we change the backing situation, it has done nothing to the metallurgical situation in that weld. The, the chemistry, the tensile strengths, the bends, the mechanical properties of that weld have not changed with or without the addition of backing. So, so far we've just talked about groove design, but in QW402. Another example of a non-essential variable, let's say our original procedure qualification record, we used um, E6011, which is an F3 filler material, and we used a 1 8 inch diameter when we qualified the weld procedure. Well, let's say we get out in the field and for whatever reason, we, we can move a lot faster if we use 5 30 seconds of an inch filler material. The welders come to us and say, hey man, this is way too slow with 1 8 inch. Can we, can we get a bigger size of the same filler material? That is a non-essential variable. We haven't changed filler materials. We've just changed, instead of buying our soda in a 12 ounce can, we're buying it in a one liter bottle or a two liter bottle. It's still the same product. We're still getting the same um, end result. We're just doing it in a faster manner. But once again, this is an instruction to the welder. So we need to tell the welders exactly what diameter filler material they can utilize. It is important. Non-essential variables are important. They need to be addressed, but it just means that you don't have to go, if you change a non-essential variable, you don't have to go back and requalify the procedure. You have to address it. You just don't have to requalify the procedure. But if we, in this instance, if we change from E6011, which is an F3, to a E7018, um, which is an F4 material, it's a change in F number. We have to go back and requalify the weld procedure. But here we're just saying inside the same filler material and we just change the diameter. There's no impact on the size of the, the impact of the size of the filler material on the metallurgical qualities of that weld are non-existent. For ASME section nine, change in position doesn't matter. Some welding codes, um, such as AWS D1.1, change in position can be a, an essential variable. You got to read your codes, but for ASME Section 9, if we qualify our weld procedure in the flat position shown over here on the left, and we want to change it to another configuration, horizontal overhead, 6G, we're good to go. Um, because nothing has changed in how metallurgically or mechanically for the code, they don't care. ASME Section 9 doesn't care. AWS D1.1 change in position, I'm pretty sure, is a um, essential variable. So you need to read your specific code. But for ASME Section 9, change in position is not an issue. A WPS. What is a WPS? Well, a WPS is basically the recipe. We've done our PQR. And we've come up with a recipe. We've already cooked the cookies once and everything came out good. And we know that if we follow that um, process, we're going to get good cookies every time. So with a WPS, we take what we did on the PQR and we make a recipe that the welders are going to use. It's just a work process. It's instructions. It's a recipe that tells the guy cooking everything, making the cookies, how many eggs, how much flour, how much chocolate chips, whatever. It tells him, hey, I'm going to weld 
this kind of carbon steel to this kind of stainless steel. I'm going to use this filler material. I'm going to use this shielding gas. I'm going to use this backing gas. I'm this is how this much preheat or um, this is going to be my heat input. You're telling that welder everything that no, it needs to go into that document to deposit sound weld metal into that joint. So basically a WPS is just a recipe. Here's a WPS example. You can see where I in the green where I've outlined joint design. There's a lot of different ways you can address that. You can say When a procedure specification is prepared by the organization, it shall address as a minimum the specific essential and non-essential variables that are applicable to the material joining process used in production. So here we've got a typical WPS, but you got to, on a WPS for ASME Section 9, you need to address all the essential and non-essential variables. You get, you, you're not getting around it. So you need to address those and have those on here. Bottom line for non-essential variables is non-essential variables are extremely important. They must be listed on the WPS for ASME Section 9. Um, some codes don't have non-essential variables. They might just have essential and supplementary essential. You need to look at whatever code you're working to and really read the code and find out the nuances of it. But the non-essential variables help to fine-tune the direction that you're giving the welder. These are things, this is information that the welder needs on the WPS, but if you change it, change a non-essential variable, like I've discussed before for ASME Section 9, um, if you go from a flat position to welding in a horizontal or a vertical position, you're still just depositing weld metal. They don't require you to requalify that variable um, to requalify another PQR for that um, welding procedure. You can just do an editorial change. So getting back to the bottom line, non-essential variables are really um, important. You need to address them. You need to be careful how you address them. You need to really delve into the code and make sure you're addressing them properly, but they do need to be addressed. Can't just leave them blank and um, ignore them. Questions or comments, um, suggestions on how to streamline these or other um, material I could touch base on, throw it on my list of things to do. Um, hopefully I was able to keep this, explain this topic in a short amount of time without getting off into the weeds too much, um, which I tend to do, but trying to explain things related to the welding codes is not something you can do in three slides and do a very thorough and professional job of it. Um, so anyways, if you got any questions, you guys know how to reach me or if you had any comments, take care, um, GP out.